Hello. Uh, does this work? I think it works. It uh, looks that way. I can see that. myself on the side. Yeah, I can see you. Okay, excellent. So cool. Welcome, welcome. Uh, let me just see if everything is fine. The Twitch is fine. YouTube is fine. Uh, very good. Hello, Ganesh. Hello, hello. Um, I guess we're ready to get this uh, Friday evening tweams. Uh, tweem. Tweem. A tweem. A tweem. Wow. It's a Twitch stream, so it's a tweem. Yeah. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's time to start. It's a little this. bit early for that. It's a bit early for a tweem. Uh, time to get a Twitch stream started here um, on today's fun topic. So this is the first topic we're going to, well, this is the first for both of us. Um, it's going to be streaming on the rocks. So both of us have a, a lovely drink. Uh, I am garnished with a lovely um, Monkey 47 gin and tonic. So if it's a German gin, me being in Germany, I, I think I should have, have that. And Kobus, <laughs> what's, what's your poison? Uh, so I've got this little friend over here. It is a Laphroaig PX cask, uh, single malt whiskey that I'm uh, okay. enjoying tonight. Oh, okay. uh, and I'm all the way down in the Southern Hemisphere in South Africa, in Cape Town. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Oh, that's also a comment. Two beard or not two beard. Uh, yes. In fact, Kobus is not my twin. Or I'm not this twin, and we're not the same person. <laughs> um, it confuses people. It, it confuses people, absolutely. So um, I think just before we start, just to introduce myself, because we may have new people on the stream. Uh, my name is Darko, and this is Kobus. And Kobus, tell us who you are. Me. So I am on the same team as Darko. I am also a senior developer advocate for AWS. Uh, I'm based out of Cape Town, and um, I used to be a developer, then I used to be a uh, DevOps engineer, and then I joined AWS. Uh, and DevOps is in quotes, obviously. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it, yeah, it's not confusing, Ganesh. I agree. Um, I actually had people people uh, ask me if I'm Gobus. Uh, it, maybe it happened to Gobus already, but uh, yeah, <laughs> not yet. Uh, so we, we might just switch uh, the, the the positions. Yeah. You might not even notice. Uh, cool. Well, uh, yeah, Gobus and I work together. Uh, he's based off uh, way down in South Africa, and I'm. Bit north um, in Germany, and the the idea behind today today's tweet tweem, right? Uh, tweem was to uh, do a bit of a a kind of a, a as we call it streaming on the rocks. So we're gonna have a nice and easy uh, drink today, and we're gonna be looking at some infrastructures code. So actually, uh, the goal is that we switch to this, and that you look at our console, uh, lovely Cloud Nine, and that within the Cloud Nine we're gonna be doing some code anything and today's topic is actually infrastructure as code so we're gonna try to wink some stuff we're gonna try to write something in infrastructure as code so um cobus is is very good in um terraform and i'm 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 okay in cloud in cdk so i'm gonna try to do something in cdk so if you if you want to learn a bit more about terraform and cdk you maybe can maybe have come to the right spot so um hello hello halfling twice yeah a lot of new people here so uh, i see a lot of folks that oh. i've never seen before so um welcome um uh so what are we gonna start Kobus? so first of all uh tell me why terraform and why not cloud formation Go ahead. Um, basically, my history is that I came, um, started doing infrastructure as code in about 2013, I think. And at that point, cloud formation was JSON only. There were a couple of things. For example, it was limited to 51K of um, content per file. Um, and just in general, it was something that I wasn't familiar with. And I tried to figure it out, tried to build with it. But also, it's the first time I did infrastructure as code. So obviously, there's nothing wrong with me. It was the tool that was bad. Um, <laughs> so I started with cloud formation. Um, then I went on to, actually I came from Bash Script, so obviously being um, a Linux um, based person, I thought I could just bash everything, was would be easy, right? Then realized, okay, no, it doesn't work well, then went to CloudFormation, then figured out the CloudFormation is broken, then went on to Ansible, then figured out Ansible is broken, see the pattern here? There you go. Um, and uh, then finally um, got to Terraform, which I think what the tool was simple enough for me to actually understand fairly well. Um, granted also by this time, this is now the third or fourth time I had actually redone an entire um, multi-account infrastructure. So learned a couple of things. And I'm like, oh, okay, let me try this differently this time. And Terraform just stuck. So used Terraform for about three, four years, I think. So started with version 0 0.6, if I remember correctly. Okay, okay, I, I, it's a fair point, right? So uh, myself as a beginner CloudFormation user. So when I when when I when I started using infrastructure as code, it was only CloudFormation, and I didn't even know of Terraform back then. 
and it was only JSON. And uh, it was, wait a second, I think I have my some, some chat issues here. Well, give me a second. I think the chat here is a bit messed up. Yeah, it is. I have two chat boxes. Aha, there you go. Um, mm -hmm. Now it's better. Um, so I started with CloudFormation, JSON only. It was a horrible experience, but that was the only thing I've done. And uh, I've stuck with it. Um, I, I, made, I made it work. And now with the, with the blessings of YAML, uh, it's easier to do stuff in, um, in, in CloudFormation. That being said, I prefer the Terraform syntax. I love the H HCL, HCL they call it, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I Hashicorp like the uh, language. HashiCorp language, yeah. Uh, it's it's so much better because it's so much more intuitive, so it's really, really cool. So Ganesh says, in some cases, Terraform seems to introduce support before CloudFormation. The CloudFormation roadmap is online, but still seems to need to catch etching up. Um, yeah, that happens. Um, I think it's, it's mostly due to the... Uh, it's kind of a, it's a good and a bad thing. We we innovate so much things. We release so much different services on AWS that sometimes the cloud formation part of it doesn't catch up. While Terraform, because I believe Terraform just uses the AWS API to build their own thing mm -hmm. around it, uh, just adopts it. So it's 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 kind of a different approach that Terraform does it compared to cloud formation. And if you ever wanted to see how you write a cloud formation template or how it is actually done, you can actually see the cloud formation registry, which completely openly shows how each resource is written and you can actually write your own resources now so it's uh it's not the cakewalk uh it takes some effort especially if you want to do it okay uh so i, I always assume that that's happening but it's not it's not an excuse so well, definitely the, the cloud formation part needs to catch up at one point uh okay uh so kobus what are you going to show us in terraform um Ooh, okay um i think let's do the basics and actually just install terraform first uh, so here, here, before before we start, um, uh, we're using Cloud9 to use like a common text editor. So you can actually see Kobus editing files, but not writing um, commands. So I don't think you can see, uh, if you look at the, the lovely bash window, I cannot see your commands. I can see only mine, but Tmux... I think we can use Tmax. Um, yeah. Oh, it's already using Tmax. So Tmax LS. Uh, so if I do Tmax attach the dash T cloud nine uh, uh, terminal. I hope this one is yours, 304. Uh, how do you unset a, a variable? Unset Tmax, right? No. Yeah, it's, on uh, it's export. Do I need I to export? export it's blank one. Ex exported with a no value, I think. It's been a while since I've had to do that. Okay. Um, export Tmux. All right. Um, try. Shes unset Tmux to force. Hmm. Uh, oh, nested sessions. Um, we could okay. always just use screen and go old school. Can we do screen? Is there screen here? There is screen. Probably. Ah, there is screen. screen yeah. I, I don't know how to use screen. That's the thing. I, I have okay. never never used screen. So I um, think we need to do something here. Um, Let me just see if you can list screens. Uh, there we go. Give me the command to connect the screen, and I'll connect to your screen. Uh, oh, uh, uh, try screen dash uh, rx. Uh, Let's see if we can get in there. Or screen, da screen dash list, if I remember correctly. It's been a few years. Yeah, I can. I can see a screen. Yeah. So cool. now and I can go. Yeah, you should be able to just, I think, screen dash rx. So it'll connect to the last screen, which is the only one that there is, I think. OK. Oh, ah. <laughs> I see it. Thank you, Kobus. I like I like your kind words. Um, actually, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> let me actually move this up here so we can actually use a, a bit of a more uh, breathing room. And uh, I think this is the command, or this is a command, or this is a command. This is the command. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, you cannot just zoom in on on the uh, on the terminal uh, interface or general. I think I need to increase the font size here. Uh, yes. So, plus, 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 should be this good? Yeah, it's better. Okay, so Kobus, 
show us how to install. Also, Ganesh, thank you very much for the export export command. Kobus, show us okay. how to install or how to get started with uh, Terraform. So very simple. You head over to terraform.io and get to the download section, and then you grab whatever architecture you want. In our case, we're going to grab Linux 64, and then you grab the latest um, zip file for it. Um, and then we're going to unzip it. Uh, Terraform over there. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh there's, a, oh, there's a directory. That's why. Sorry. Cool. Auto complete. We unzip it and we get a. Uh, I'm being stupid. Yeah, uh, directory and a file name with the same thing. Cool. Let's try this again. As you can see, there's just one binary inside of it. Uh, so Terraform is actually written in Go and it compiles to a single binary. And what we're going to do is we're going to move this to um, uh, USR bin. So a fun one over here is I recently learned that, uh, sorry, that uh, USR doesn't stand for user, which is quite fun. Oh, what does it stand for? Yeah. Uh, Universal Shared Resources. I was always convinced it was user, but okay. <laughs> I was also convinced it was user, so I learned a new thing. All right, the more you know. Yeah, cool. So let's clean up that zip file quickly. And now, so I just copied it to uh, USR bin. Uh, so now it's on our path. So now we can go to Terraform and we can see that, boom, the command is working. And there we have Terraform installed. It's that easy. Single file. There we go. If anybody ever struggled to, to install Terraform, you're welcome. <laughs> There's also, if you want, um, I've actually got a nice um, uh, little code snippet on my GitHub um, profile, uh, which is just Kubis Bernard, where you can get and swap between the different uh, Terraform versions. Because when you do upgrade, let's say you run your state or your plan and apply with a higher version, you always need to have at least that version to run. And every time you run it with a higher version, it will force you to actually use that um, higher one because it upgrades the state file. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah. Cool. So um, that is it. So let us quickly uh, create a directory for Terraform. Let's just do tem Terraform demo. Cool. And I'm just going to create a file called uh, example. .tf. So basically how Terraform works is inside a directory, anything with a .tf extension, it'll take and concat that into one big file, and then it'll run um, and figure out what the dependency graph is between all the different resources in there. So you can decide how you want to chop and split it up into different files. Um, but the files need to be named .tf, right? Yes, yeah. So you can, I think, I want to say there's a flag that you can override it, but um, I've never had to. It just feels like a bad habit to try and do that. Um, so anything called uh, with a .tf. Okay. And then if we, I'm just going to go grab an example quickly. Uh, the basic uh, uh, ECS, oh, sorry, not ECS, uh, EC2 one. Um, bada, 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 boom. Just hopping over quickly. Let me open up. Remember not to use the file. Okay. I, I opened yeah. the example TF just so you know. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. So people can see what you're so, doing. So, cool. Awesome. So I've got it open as well. Uh, let me paste my code in here. And I'm assuming I need to save it, otherwise you won't be able to see it. Let's see. There we go. Boom. Excellent. Uh, let me just try to then move this again so we can see both of the things at the same time. I'm not a fan of this. Uh, can I somehow F11 things? No, not that. F12? No. What is the full mm -hmm. screen thing command on Chrome? Uh, I don't know. View full screen. Enter full screen. Uh -huh. Okay. So we have a bit more breathing room on this one. So, uh, cool. yeah, Ch Choco is great. It's the mm. but, but apparently Microsoft has a new uh, Windows has a new uh, package manager. Mm. Oh, okay. I haven't yeah. actually caught up with that yet. Uh, I saw it in the latest build conference. They basically have a command line app style package manager. Amazing. <laughs> so okay, yeah, that'll, that'll be interesting. Yeah. Okay, so now we can yeah, see cool. both Cobus. We can see both. Uh, the, the example TF and the console. console. Yeah. So I'll, okay, try, awesome. I'll try to keep up. So basically the first thing you have to do in Terraform is you have to define a provider. So a provider is some kind of infrastructure system that you're going to be working with. So in our case, we're going to use the AWS provider because we want to spin up an AWS um, EC2 instance. Um, and then you have to configure it by passing it a bunch of um, configuration values. Now what you'll see over there is currently it's going to use the region US West um, 2. Uh, which is not the one I usually use. I usually go for EU West 1, which is Ireland. Uh, it's, a, it's the closest one to Cape Town. Or, sorry, it was the closest one to uh, to Cape Town up yeah. until about uh, two weeks ago. Um, well, no, sorry, not even two weeks. It's now a month. Uh, we launched the Cape Town region on 22 April. So 
um, but we're going to play in um, Ireland for now. So the first thing we do over there is we change it to uh, EU West 1. Uh, okay, cool. You can actually see it on the fly. Awesome. Um, and the reason, and then what we do is we don't configure anything else. Um, the reason is that it'll make use of the IAM role for this instance that we're using because Cloud9 actually just runs on an EC2 instance in the background as well. And that EC2 instance has got an IAM role associated with it. That IAM role gets its credentials automatically and it rotates every 15 minutes as well. Um, so don't put credentials here in any case because you don't want to commit that file. It's a bad idea. Uh, you can also configure, for example, to use uh, IAM roles if you want to do, um, and we will, in, well, probably not tonight, but in a future example, I'll show you how to do that actually to hop between the different accounts because uh, it's quite a nice way to then provision resources from one single login um, but with access to multiple accounts. So that's the provider. Then what we have um, here next is a block that starts with data. Um, and just one thing quickly, you'll see that this, um, syntax is JSON-like. It's not quite JSON because you can see there aren't, not everything is string escaped um, and there's not, you wouldn't have commas everywhere. And this is the HashiCorp language um, that we're dealing with. Um, sorry, uh, there we go. And the first block we have over here, data is a data source. So you can actually do a lookup against your uh, different infrastructure providers to get data out of it. In our case, what we want to do is we want to take a look, do a lookup for an AWS AMI, which is an Amazon machine image. So that's the image we're going to use to actually spin up an EC2 instance. Um, we're just going to give it some kind of variable name. So we're going to call it Ubuntu for now. Um, we can also obviously call it um, streaming on the rocks. Cool. Yeah. Let's just give it a different name. Right. And then we're going to configure how it's going to search for this AMI. So firstly, we're going to say grab the most recent one, true. And we're going to use filters to figure out which ones we're searching for. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to search for a specific Ubuntu image, but we're not going to go for 1404. That's a little bit old for what we want to do. <clears throat> we're going to go for Bionic. Um, and we're going to go for and the version number for that is 18.04. Uh, then we're going to use another filter to search for HVM versions only. And then lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to limit this to a very specific AWS account. The reason is that this account is owned by Canonical which means that we will only find AMIs that they have shared with the public. And the reason is we don't want to just grab any old AMI from any random account. Um, you might not have a good day if you do that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Be very careful when taking public AMIs unless you know who it's from. So a lot of people can create public AMIs. Just be careful. Make sure to choose the one owned by Canonical in this case. Yeah. You can see in the example, they actually have the correct um, uh, idea as well. You can also um, create a copy of this inside your own account. And then only instead of saying owners with that account, you can just say owners self, because then you know you won't access any AMIs outside of your account. So now that we know that what the AMI ID is, we have got an AWS instance, and this is prefixed by the resource keyword, which tells us this is now an actual infrastructure resource that we're going to be creating. Um, once again, give it the type, which is an AWS instance, and then also uh, we're going to call it web, um, but you can call it anything you want. Um, call it anything let's call you it want. Bebop. Bebop. Hey, don't joke. I once worked with the database scheme where the, uh, the scheme was something like this, um, um, BD underscore user. And then when I told someone to write this out, he went. BD underscore yeah. user. Wow. Okay. Yes. So, so I, I worked in one of my previous jobs uh, with one of, one of our partners, clients of, of that job. And they've... Um, They've they they were in finance and they had like a banking audit coming up by the local um, local central bank of that country, and um, the audit was basically everything. They would check databases and all the stuff. Uh, the thing is, uh, the name of the user, of the main root user of the database was effing user. So uh, <laughs> the problem is they wow. could not yeah they could not change the root user easily. <laughs> So <laughs> there was a whole step to migrate the database off to a different database because effing user uh, was not the proper thing you would show to a local central bank. So yeah, um, a bit of yeah, a tangent. No, definitely. Cool. Okay. So now that we've got that up, I've just called it anything, just have fun. Thank you. And then what we do is we're now going to reference that data lookup that we did. And what you can see over here is the quoted string and then with that dollar curly brace is actually the pre-0.12 string interpolation syntax. And that's how you would reference variables if you wanted to. But now with the 0.12, they changed the syntax so we can actually take that out because uh, they are going to deprecate it from, I think, 0.14. They do the double version skip before they deprecate something. So we're just going to rip those out and we're going to start off with a T2 micro 
Um, and we're going to start with uh, and just call it hello. What's a fun name? Uh, streaming on the rocks. It's always the hardest thing. Cool. Uh, now, one thing that's going to break over here is that remember, we did rename the Dota lookup to streaming on the rocks. So I just need to reference the correct one, not the Ubuntu one over here. So let's mm -hmm. update that. And that's pretty much it that we need. So now we can go ahead and say Terraform plan. What the, oh, sorry. We first have to initialize it, like with most things. There you go. Mm -hmm. Going too fast. Going cool. too fast. Focus. Let's go Terraform in. So what Terraform in it does is it actually pulls down all the plugins and providers and creates a hidden, um, uh, what do you call it, Terraform state file. So if you go ls.terraform, creates that directory. Uh, actually, no. Oh, interesting. That's changed. It used to create a blank state file. Interesting. Um, but you can see over here now that we've just got the plugins. And if you go look in that directory, you'll see the individual binaries for the AWS provider. Um, that's the only one we're currently using. So we are now initialized. Now we can go Terraform plan. So this is one of the big things that sold me on Terraform way back um, in, two, what was that, 2013, 14-ish, was the ability to plan, which means that it tells you what do I want to do to your infrastructure. So um, and when you run Terraform yep. plan, I've saw people Terraform plan into a file. Is that the better approach uh, or yes. is it just like this? No, so it definitely is the better approach. The reason is that when you run Terraform apply, if you don't have a file, it actually runs the plan again. Okay. And in that case, it might be different to what the changes are that you reviewed. Okay. So, yeah. So it's both good and, good and bad in the sense that it's good that you know exactly what it is that's going to roll out. It's bad in the sense that let's say someone went and changed things and now this plan actually can't work when you should change additional things. Then you would have some issues. Right. Okay. So, yeah. Cool. But in any case, if we scroll up... Ooh, oh, wait. You've got something funny. I don't know how to scroll up this... Uh, oh, wait. No, I do. I, I can scroll up. I can scroll up. I can scroll up if you need to. Uh, no, no, no. no. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold. I need to, it's, it's, it's green. Mm. Uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. G <laughs> give me a second. Uh, muscle memory. If this was Tmux, I wouldn't have known, but it's it's green. Actually, this thing runs in Tmux. Um, it's kind of like a wrapper around Tmux. Okay. So, but yeah. Um, this? No. Okay. So I think it's got different. Uh, okay. Unfortunately, it's different key bindings to what I remember why I had custom mappings. My muscle memory is not yet kicking uh, in for some reason. In any case, um, let's actually then just do this. Uh, Terraform plan uh, dash oh, out. Uh, yeah, plan dot out. Cool. So it's going to pipe it out to a, a plan file. And then what we can do is we can do Terraform show plan dot out. And um, let's pipe that into less so we can actually see what we're dealing with. Oh, okay. Uh, I forgot. Uh, don't use less. Uh, don't be. Don't be me. You can actually open up the file in the in a text editor. We have a text editor. This is an IDE we're running in. Do you want me to open up Nano? No, 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 no. no. You can. Have, <laughs> you can double. Wait. Let me try. Let me try. Plan that out like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. Never mind. I thought it was a text file. file. Yep. Hmm. Nope. 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 It's a binary file. So Terraform uh, show dash dash. I think it's no color. Wait, it's a US spelling. Something like that. Uh, oh, single dash. Uh, oh, ooh. There are some fun commands over here. Cool. Not like no state. Uh, oh. It's doing that because I didn't give it the file name. Yep. Give me one more second. There we go. Cool. Ah. Now we can see um, all the different. Mr. B Gringo 31 says not like CDK. What do you mean not like CDK? I mean it is different from CDK, absolutely. But uh, what what specifically? Because I might be doing CDK after this. Hmm. So while we wait for that answer, it'll take a few seconds. Yeah. Um, you can see over here that all the changes that um, we want to do. Um, actually, can you make the oh the output file? Yeah, yeah. CDK output file is, is text. Yeah, it, and it's cloud permission. Yeah. So in any case, you can see exactly what it wants to change. And now what you would want to do is you want to go, um, not plan, uh, Terraform apply, and you give it that plan file. So what it'll now do is it'll go ahead and create that infrastructure. And this should take, uh, I think, 21 or 22 seconds last time I tested. So obviously, depending on the time of day and how busy the APIs are, um, and then the instance will actually spin up. So does Terraform actually handle um, back offs and, and retries? That's a, that's a that's a fair point. I mean, yeah, so, I would... it, um, so it's even more interesting. You can literally take your laptop and close the lid at this point because it's polling. 
And then oh. when you open up five hours later, it'll continue polling and say, oh, it's done. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. All right. That's a fair thing. Yeah. Awesome. So you have, in essence, created an EC2 instance in my account now. By the way, Cobus, yep. Cobus has Cobus has uh, admin privileges in my account, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, am, I am afraid what he may do. Uh, so let's let's find the, find the anything instance. Um, hello, streaming on the rocks. There we go. It's a it's an Ubuntu instance, um, T two micro. Did we define an instance size? Yeah. Um, yeah. T two micro. Launched in a default VPC. Yeah. yeah. Because we didn't specify the VPC, so it'll grab whatever the um, the first one is, I believe, not the default necessarily. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, oh, the first one. Okay, okay. Uh, it has the default security group, and uh, yeah. I mean, it has sensible defaults on itself, so it will... Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's very cool. I want to say it actually defaults with... Uh, most of them are... No, I don't want to say that they are default AWS um, CLI ones, but there's a good chance. I haven't looked at it recently enough to confirm that. Okay. Um, yeah. So then what I do want to show is the next interesting fun is if you can open up the terraform.tf state file. Wait, let me, let me test out something from, uh, from, uh, from Cloud9. I can open active file. Ha! There you go. See? It's buddy programming. Nice. Ah. Okay. So this is just plain JSON, and we can actually read this. Okay. Uh, so what you can see over there, there's a Terraform version, so 0 0.12.25, um, and that's the version I spoke about. So if you try and use anything less than this, it'll give you an error saying, sorry, you're not using a recent enough version of Terraform. Yeah. And as soon as you make an apply to an account, it'll also update the state um, to then use uh, the newer version. Uh, lineage, I believe, is just a random good that generates to indicate a unique file. And then what we can see is we've got a nice little array here of all the different resources. So in our mm -hmm. case, we've got that uh, the data lookup um, for an AMI, and we can see all the details over here that are actually pulled out of that AMI in terms of the configuration, the title over here. We can see canonical Ubuntu 18.04, bloody, bloody, blah. blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And yo, a lot of config. And then what we can go over here is we can see that we've got the AWS instance now. And so, so scroll down. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Cool. Um, and what you can see over here is that we actually can see the AMI ID of the lookup, and we can also get the ARN of that actual resource along with the instance ID of what we just created, along with all the other details of the instance. So this is how Terraform actually keeps track of things. Um, so then what happens is if you make a change, either let's say in the Terraform file or in the console by hand, it'll compare the state file with what it sees in the console with what you've got in your tier files and figure out what the delta is between those three and then say, okay, this is what I want to apply. Okay. And um, what happens if I make changes? Uh, why don't you go ahead and make a change? Let see try. what happens. Let me try if I go uh, changes. It's, let's, this, this, is, this brings me back. Um, stop and i'm going to change the instant size and i want you to reapply the settings um will it actually revert or it will will it moan about it uh mm. pmh uh halaba i'm sorry mahlaba uh, i'm sorry to pronounce that uh yeah try out the terraform and cloud nine it works great especially because you don't have to worry about any permissions or, or uh, uh, access keys because it takes cloud nine takes your user your logged in user like darko uh, it takes that user's permission and applies them to uh, terraform as well so it's easy easy to do that so let me the, the only thing to be aware of is that cloud nine is actually locked down to not allow uh, role switching to other accounts um, okay. So I'm still having digging into that a little bit to see exactly how you can enable this role to switch to another account. Uh, Hoy Gerten writes, "You should not be able, allowed to change anything. Only way to write the CI/CD." Absolutely, right. So this is this is uh, this is me being horrible and man manually changing stuff. You should never do it like this. <laughs> I just want to see what happens because, truth be told, I don't know what happens. So um, I really want to see now uh, instances pending. I've changed the instance size to a T3 large. Um, cool. I want to see what happens. By the way, chat, is the sound okay? Uh, I have not tested it. Covis' sound. Uh, are we loud enough, both of us? Uh, it, for me, it seems okay. Just let us know. Okay. Thank you, Ganesh. Okay. Sounds uh, fine. I think we'll get louder as the, the whiskey progresses. <laughs> well, <laughs> absolutely. So Ganesh says, change your console role to be a read-only, then everything has to be has to be IAC with right roles. Absolutely. Mm. So, so in, a, in an ideal world, so in my world, the, the only tool you need to change anything on AWS would be this. So just, just mm. git. If you if you do just git push, that's what I want in, in my world, right? Um, any change to be made with a mm. git push. But it's not an ideal world. Well, and 
an easy way to actually do this is by having separate AWS accounts and then you just don't give the developers any roles in production. So if they want to get anything there, it has to be infrastructure as code. So they're welcome to fiddle by hand in the dev account, but after the seventh or eighth time, they get like, okay, fine, stuff it, let me use whatever uh, infrastructure tool you have. Exactly, exactly. Uh, forcing people to do stuff. Uh, okay, uh, Kobus, I've broken your infrastructure. I am that operations person that, that breaks. Uh, yeah. Cool. We're going to go plan again quickly. So Terraform is going to do a quick look up against the current state file and compare what it sees inside our tier file along with what it sees in the console. Oh, did I apply? Ah, okay. It should give me an issue. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty said, oh, plan dot out. There we go. This is actually interesting. It should have given me an error saying that this plan is not valid. Hmm. Mm. That should not happen. But I think, oh, okay. I think I know what happened there is that when you run without a proper backend that's versioned okay. in like S3. It didn't keep track of the state. Uh, so what I would expect now is we're going to have two instances. So but let's now see. I can show you. But it, this, it's fine. This, is, I... this is a great segue to some other important things is that state file. Yes, we have two instances mm -hmm. now. So it has yep. created an additional instance. So be careful when you do this. You do not want to replicate uh, five EMR clusters like this. Um, so okay, cool. let's, so... let's go back. Uh, no, what I need you to do is quickly to grab that instance ID of the correct one. And then correct. I'll show you how we're going to uh, have some fun with the state file. All right, copying. Where should I paste this thing? Go back to the TF state file. TF state file, yeah, I'm here. Line one, two, three. One, two, three, how convenient. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's the same one. Is it the same one? There we go. That highlighted uh -huh. bit. Replace that instance ID now quick with the, what are the, that zero, three, eight. Whoops, oh, wait a second. Let me just go back. Aye, aye. Well, bam. Cool. Okay. So, this is one of the things, depending on how long you've used Terraform and how cowboy you want to be, you can start editing things directly in the state file and actually import resources that way by hand. Before there was an import command, this was the only way. So, I had a lot of experience actually just hacking in this file and modifying resources and dealing with the issues. So, now. We still need to remember to delete that other one, by the way. Otherwise, we'll forget about it. Okay. Uh, but uh, let me just go Terraform plan, not the apply one. Control R again. Uh, there we go. Plan dot out. This will be a bit better. And now uh, you need to open up the plan out, or we don't see anything. Can I maybe hmm. increase the size? Okay. So this is the first time we're using. Um, Cloud9 to do something like this. So it's a, a bit of a, it's limiting us in this. Should I, uh, do you want to see what's in the back of the output? Or? Uh, let me just see if I can list this. Oh, now I remember the issue with um, screen is that the buffer, buffer length by default isn't very high. So mm -hmm. let's actually pipe this out into um, uh, plan.txt file. Okay. And then we can just go. Less or or you can just text. open it and I'm, I have opened it in a in a proper editor. Oh, <laughs> okay. oh we can do that as well. I keep right. forgetting that I'm so used to. I I I end up using Vim in Cloud Nine <laughs> in the terminal. So mm. yeah, yeah, that's ingrained that whole server mode. Okay, so now what we can see over here is that uh, let's scroll down until we see a tilde or something. Um, boom 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 boom. Just, just yell out which line. Yeah, it's actually interesting. I don't see that it's got a told. So I don't know if it is. I think the plan without color is not going to show us anything. Eh. Okay. Okay. Um, so we don't, we don't know what's going to change, right? Yeah, that's the problem here. Terraform plan. Let's see if I pipe that to plan.txt. Maybe it's going to have those funky colors. Yeah, so... Uh, State file is not changeable. Look, but don't touch. Golden rule of Terraform. <laughs> <laughs> That's the golden I rule. I say usually, yeah. but I think the amount of times I changed Terraform files because I reshaped and and split from one Terraform state into multiple states and moved things by hand, um, I got very good at it. Yeah. So so tell me if you so if if you change the Terraform state file, is that a completely another level of infrastructure as code? Um, it depends what you change and how you change yeah, it. There so, you go. <laughs> so for example, if I, yeah, if I go ahead and change that instance, I did something that doesn't exist. Mm 
<laughs> uh, it'll say that, hey, listen, that res resource was deleted off mm. AWS. We need to create a new one, even though it wasn't because okay. it no longer has reference to that resource. Um, where is, uh, actually, let me just see if I can find, uh, oh, wait, uh, now my forward slash doesn't work. I have to use normal control find. Um, micro. Where is micro? Oh, there we go. Uh, yes. Okay, so what we can see is on line 31. We just can't see it with because of the coloring. Okay. Yes. You can see that if you look on the right, it's got T3 large. Mm -hmm. and it's got a little color arrow, which is supposed to be or, um, orange. Yeah. Or, yeah. And it's going to take, change it back to a T2 micro. So we can actually, we now know that it's going to do what we expect it to do. So okay. let's go ahead and uh, apply. All right. So it, uh, it, it should actually track, it should actually um, change that thing to the initial uh, Terraform st uh, state, right? Yeah. So what happened there is that in the Terraform state file, it still thinks it's a T2 micro. In our Terraform file, it thinks it's a T2 micro, or that's at least what we're asking for. But in reality, it sees that it isn't. So it tells us that it wants to change that. Okay. okay. So what you can see over here is that um, because I ran apply without the file, it's now going to try and apply or rerun the plan and then just apply it quickly. So now what we can see is it's actually destroying that instance. Um, so it, it recreates it, right? Yeah. So one to destroy, one to add. Okay. Yeah. So the reason for that is if you think about how we ch make a change to, inf to an instance, um, it would be to shut it down, change it, and start it back up again. And for Terraform, there's certain resources like EC2 instances that uh, you can't just do it this way. Um, so when you do look at the plan file, always look at it carefully. If you see that red plus minus where it creates and kills off an instance or some other resource like a database, um, mm -hmm. ask me how I know. Um, <laughs> be very careful. Yeah, Kobus, have you ever destroyed the database? Yes, on dev. On dev? Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. I, I have been um, lucky enough that I've never destroyed anything in prod, uh, but I've actually I've worked with a person who has decided to patch the production SAN on a Wednesday noon. Uh, mm -hmm. And one of the SAN controllers died <laughs> during the patching. Mm -hmm. uh, well, during the second one patching. And um, yeah. So Ganesh says, uh, especially if changing database, changing instance type should not destroy the database, but changing something else. Yeah, absolutely. So mm -hmm. when making any change, even with infrastructure as code, and this is one of the points somebody told me on Twitter or somewhere, um, Automation, such as infrastructure as code or these kind of things, can help you do things at scale. But it can also t um, it can also help you mess up at scale. So make sure that mm. if you do something at it, be very careful with automation. So, um, in case you're wondering, that's when you start uh, verging out of DevOps into DevOps. DevOps, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. There's a conference uh, happening, um, I think, in July called DevOps. So yeah, I'll Ooh, be talking. Yeah. I'll be I'll be talking there. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. So this is basically it. But now, obviously, the important thing here is that you need to really worry about this Terraform state file. So you don't want to keep it on local disk. Uh, you want to keep it in some other backend. And you've got a whole list of options in terms of the backend. You can use uh, S3. You can use Terraform Cloud. Um, you can even use normal RDS databases, I believe, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, the, the only caveat there is that depending on the backend type that you're using to store it, if it doesn't have a locking mechanism, then you can't prevent someone else from making uh, changes while you are busy making a change. So for example, if you store it in S3, uh, you'll have to create a DynamoDB table as well, because then what you can do is create an entry in there and hold that lock while you're running your state. And you would want this for your CI CD pipeline, unless you try and enforce um, single runs only uh, in ter terms of paralyzing it in your um, CI CD service. No. Yeah, we have two, two actually answers from Ganesh and uh, Mahalaba mm -hmm. uh, saying the DynamoDB for state locks, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think the best practice here, Kobus, would be to keep your state file not on your workstation, not in a Git yeah. repo, but somewhere in a shared resp resp repository or somewhere where you can actively lock the file. Because yeah. if you're doing it by yourself, I guess it's fine, right? But uh, you, you are hopefully never doing it by yourself. And no. uh, yeah. Oh, that yeah. is also fixed uh, Terraform state by hand. Wow. Oh, yeah. There you go. You cannot do that with CloudFormation. So CloudFormation is better, right? Uh... Tell us about CloudFormation. Um, <laughs> just quickly, Dennis, just for amusement, I actually had scripts way back in the day where I would give it the environment I'm dealing with along with the specific um, 
like subset of uh, Terraform states and would copy the from S3 the state file to local and automatically copy a backup file with a date attached to it as well. So I could edit the state file and if I messed it up, it's like, okay, fine, just grab the backup and upload that again. So yeah, I know where you're coming from. And uh, I would read this as Debayork. Uh, use Jenkins uh, to plan, apply a task and parse the plan mm. output and post them in an infra stack. Or, yeah, I... Mm. As much as you can automate to do things at scale, you should also automate to help you understand what you're automating because mm. sometimes you need automation to, well, see what's happening. So that's a really good approach. Having a proper CI/CD pipeline for infrastructure deployments is crucial, right? So... Yeah. Yeah, and Jenkins is actually awesome in that because it can detect um, when you create new repositories and when you push new commits to it. And okay. then it'll automatically use the Jenkins file to then kick off Terraform, which will then actually create this that application's CI CD pipeline. Because I know often you've got the chicken egg issue where what creates the app pipeline for the infrastructure's code that creates the pipeline. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, so so um, Kobus showed you the ma massive um, greatness of Terraform here. I will let him drink right now, so I, I will actually show something else to you. Um, I will uh, I'll just move somewhere else. So but before uh, Ganesh says, a uh, few tools, Cloudcraft IO allows to visual representation of architecture exported mm. as TF. Is there anything similar to CloudFormation? So CloudFormation has its own, uh, what is it called, designer tool that can show you kind of a, vis a visual representation of what you're being, what you, once you're launching. It's not the proper diagram. It just shows you the interactions of different resources you are, you are uh, creating. So it, it's a good start, I think. But it's not, I think there's another, somebody mentioned there's a great tool out there for CloudFormation that does that in a better way, but I can't recall now. Um, so, but Cloudcraft IO is great for Terraform. I've, I've seen it, I've seen it work. Mm. All right, um, so uh, let me actually move to the 21st century and talk about serverless. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I'm not a serverless person, but I, I just want to make that joke. Um, so I'm going to talk about CDK a bit, right? I'm going to just show you the basics of CDK or the Cloud Development Kit which is uh, kind of a, a, an AWS flavor of, of, of a more, hmm, more generic programming language approach to infrastructure as code. So uh, CDK in essence is CloudFormation's little buddy uh, or little brother. So it's built on top of CloudFormation that, and it helps you um, create CloudFormation templates in essence, right? So you write your infrastructure in generic programming languages such as Java, TypeScript and JavaScript, uh, Python, C Sharp, and F Sharp. So if you're funny, uh, if you're in any of those languages, you can actually use them to uh, deploy your infrastructure. And compared to CloudFormation, it's very easy. And I'll tell you my favorite part of CDK, and it's to do with EC2 instances. Have anybody in chat used CloudFormation before? Um, especially in the JSON years. Um, have you ever had to attach a user data script to an EC2 instance in JSON. Ooh, I yeah. remember that. Yeah, so you, uh -huh. would have, you would have to literally escape every line of bash code in a JSON script. And that was just a pain. When we moved to YAML, it was better because you can kind of block it off. But with CDK, you can just read it off disk, which is amazing. So when I figured out I can read the user data file off disk, amazing. So yeah. Uh, Mahlava, I use CloudFormation as well. So uh, I think uh, both of them have a, have a, have a position here. And when people ask me, which one should you use? Whichever one suits your purpose. Uh, CDK is easier to get into, I would say, especially if you want to do something really fast. But if you want full control, absolutely full control over things like a, a better visual representation of what you're doing, CloudFormation gives you a, 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 let's say a bit of finer detail when you write stuff. So that's my, my opinion. People would argue with me, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, but, I would argue a little bit. The, uh, sometimes the CloudFormation has got a very steep learning curve. Um, so, but it's one of those things, I think once you've gone past that peak, it starts to flatten out and you've got a lot of power suddenly. So it's with any kind of super powerful tool, there are a couple of hard things you have to learn and then it that's becomes true. easy. That's true. So CDK and the rocks, let's, let's start here. I'm going to create a directory called CDK and the rocks and I'm going to create a small serverless application called CDK and the rocks, I guess, right? So CD, CDK under rocks. So now first thing you have to have installed is you need to have CDK installed. So CDK version. Uh, on Cloud9, by default, it's installed. But if you do, if you don't have it installed, npm g at aws uh, cdk core or no, just aws cdk. This should, this should work. Yeah. So this should install cdk for you. 
Uh, I have it installed right now, so I don't have to do anything. So I move into this directory called CDKM Rocks. I do CDK in it. Um, let's call it app or, you know what? Let's, mm, shall I do sample app without that? Okay, yeah, just that. Uh, yeah, when you install mm -hmm. modules, you have to use that, right? Um, so CDK in it app, and I'll just choose a language. I'll TypeScript. So should you use TypeScript or uh, is TypeScript my favorite language? No, it's not. Uh, the most examples I've seen out Ooh. there are, yeah, it's not. Oh, oh boy, I, I I started in Python. But more examples out there exist in TypeScript, and I'm not as good enough in Python as I, for me to be able to do it all in Python. So, yeah, TypeScript it is. Um, okay, sensitivity. No, not that. Type, peachy. Peachy, yeah, yeah TypeScript. See, Terraform already wins. <laughs> Terraform, Terraform in it. Terraform in it, there you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. A few other things. Let's see how many people left the stream now. Nobody, nobody oh. still left, so yeah, it's it's still here. <laughs> not, every, not everybody came for, came for Terraform. No? There's also a new version of CDK, but uh, let me ignore it for now. Um, all right, so if I go CDK under rocks here, um, I should have some files here, right? Yeah. Um, refresh. Oh boy. You'll have to tell me what all of those files do. Yes, I will as soon as I open them. All right, so here on the left-hand side, uh, you can see a couple of things. So there's a few things we need to we need to uh, know, especially when we're starting. So um, CDK JSON, package JSON, and TSconfig JSON are kind of configuration files for your current project. Um, Usually, if you just start with them, you do some basic applications. You don't have to worry about them at all. Like package JSON con contains all of your, um, um, well, packages required for this current uh, or dependencies required for this current no uh, node project. Uh, again, these things differ de depending on which language you use on CDK. But two important files which you get started with is your bin file, or this is the file where, uh, wait, let me just unzoom this. Uh, why you do that? <laughs> I'm trying to unzoom this. No, it doesn't work. All right. Well, there we go. Take my uh, zoom away. Take my zoom away, please. Um, so it it actually this is the cloud nine can't it 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 can't unzoom what? No. Uh, I know folks in cloud nine. Uh, I'm gonna have to talk to them. Uh, I think I think zoom out is a is a necessary feature of zoom in. But yeah, so. This is the, the bin file, or this is the CDK and rocks TS file. This, so this file actually defines your application and a stack. So you see we're creating a new CDK application and that CDK application will create a new stack. Now, uh, a lot of the things here, a lot of the apps can have, you can have multiple apps here as well, but you can also have multiple stacks. So one of the, one of the great examples is, for example, instead of having a single stack here, uh, you can have your dev, staging, prod, whatnot. Uh, within the same application. So that's pretty cool. Now, the next file we need to have a look into, I'm actually going to just move this now because um, I am the one controlling the screen. Um, can I? So now the other file is in the lib directory and it's the CDK on the rocks. If you close all files on, on CDK, it's fine. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll live. And hopefully people can see this enough. Now, this is where where your code goes. So this is where the meat and potatoes of your application sit in. And this is where you would actually define certain things. So uh, actually, let me get started with something. Actually, uh, instead of pasting something, I just want to look at something. I want to look at some code I'm going to be using here. And I'm actually going to paste uh, a repository uh, later on once uh, I show you of basically a similar code I I've used. Now, there's a lot of code and I don't want to do it all because it takes a bunch of time for me to do it, but uh, let's create a Lambda function, right? So I think that's the first thing you do is you create a Lambda function. And to create a Lambda function, first of all, you need something. You need to create an import or you need to import um, Lambda uh, as, actually, let me do it this way. So I will, not that, this, and then as Lambda from, uh, AWS Lambda. So we need this module, right? So we are going to use this module to um, to uh, 
create Lambda functions. Now, it's, it's going to complain here that it can't, cannot find this module. So to do this, you can just npm uh, install at AWS CDK, uh, CDK that slash AWS Lambda. This should work, hopefully. That works. Okay, it has installed a whole bunch of things. Now, if I go back here, um, hopefully this will go away. Uh, it's, it's, it's declared, but it's never used. Now, to create a Lambda function, it's relatively simple. So I just go const, call it uh, hello Lambda, and just do new, uh, what is the name, lambda.function, uh, function, like so, within this context, uh, and then, uh, ba, 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 call it a, give it a name hello handler and then i need to do some properties right so all this okay uh then i do runtime so we define our lambda's runtime and that it will be lambda dot runtime dot i will do node.js what is this 10.x right so like so is it possible to get uh, autocomplete going in Cloud9 or not? I have no idea. So I know this work, the autocomplete works in Visual Studio Code, but I'm not sure on Cloud9 because it shows some things, but it doesn't work uh, as as maybe as well as it should. So, um, yeah. Okay. It, it's still a bit iffy, uh, in my opinion. So, cannot find module AWS CDK Lambda. I've installed this module, didn't I? Yeah, I did it. AWS Lambda. AWS Lambda. Hmm. Let's try it. Let's give it give it a moment. Um, code. Now I have to. This is where you define your Lambda code. So instead of pasting your code here, like uh, within with some other uh, infrastructure code tooling, you can actually read off disk. So I'm actually going to use something called the asset. So I do Lambda, uh, Lambda, and then it's uh, code from asset and then i'm just going to call it lambda so we're going to have to create a directory called lambda in the in the root directory of our application uh, then okay. i am gonna do a handler right handler and i'm just going to call it hello uh, dot handler now this is interesting so um if if I just create this, it's going to look for a Lambda function in the Lambda directory. Now, I've never specifically told it, hey, use this JavaScript file as my Lambda function or use this Python file or whatnot. It will look in this Lambda directory for anything uh, with the name hello. So a file called the hello. Okay. So the handle can be, you know, the, the, the extension can be anything. Well, depending on which runtime you're using, but it's going to... It's going to look for a hello um, file within the Lambda directory. So if I go again here, um, mkdir hello, no, Lambda, right? And then I go to Lambda. I can create the file here called hello, hello.js, right? So now in this JavaScript file, I will actually be adding some code. Now, let me just see. I would, I would really like not to type all of this. So... Um, Hmm. Give me a second. Let me try to open up something here. Ooh. Oh, You're going to cheat. You're going to copy and paste. I know. And I know a person with a beard who has copied the paste as well. So, hey. Mm. <laughs> it's how you make demos work other than actually pre-recording and embedding them in your presentation. This is all live, folks. It's all live mm -hmm. and, and we're drinking alcohol. So um, you, you have to expect a certain level of quality here. <clears throat> All right, uh, exports handler. All right, look here. Oh, movie magic, right? There you go. Um, so I have created, this is a, just a simple Lambda function that does nothing. Uh, so that's all good. Um, I think this all fine. I, I, why is this still, I, I'm still confused. Why is this thing uh, uh, being angry with me? Uh, I should have this install. Uh, cannot find module NPM. Let me try to do it again. Uh, uh, install the CDK dash lambda. Yeah, this looks fine. Uh, actually, let me let me reduce the size of this thing a bit more. Terminal duck, duck, like that. Is this better? Maybe. Um, oh boy. 
we'll we'll see what happens. So the easiest way to check this if this works, it would be if I would just a bit more reduce it like that, and then run uh, here npm run build. So it's running actually when you run npm run build, it runs uh, TypeScript. It compiles TypeScript. Okay, so it's it has failed. Uh, the argument, this is not assigned. Uh, it should be assigned. I'm using, uh, it's within this handler, right? Am I not doing it correctly? Um, what did I do wrong? Let me see if I can figure this out. Mm. And uh, while we're looking, you can tell me why uh, I should be using this instead of Terraform. <laughs> because you can use any other programming language. Uh, oh, version hey. mismatch. There you go. Uh, that could be a very good point. So people, update your uh, update your CDK. So npm oh. dash g um, aws cdk. But I mean, I think just to to comment on that joke, mm -hmm. uh, it is a joke because I mean, you saw how easily I created an additional instance with Terraform. It's yeah. um, like you said. Uh, with these automation tools, you have great power to, uh, oops. Okay. <laughs> File exists. Uh, so, okay, uh, in your package JSON. Oh, okay. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. See, but it's, oh, it, okay, 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 okay. But it's using that version, uh, isn't it? Or should I just put it, bump it out to 138? Yeah. yeah. It's... npm install upgrade uh would that work uh, but npm install upgrade would install all right uh, npm install dash dash upgrade mm. see how we both take a sip of drink before running code mm. that's experience um okay so it's one version for all the cdk libs install the latest yeah yeah um was the older one well um okay actually uh hogarten has got a good point here saying that yeah. it'll install the latest version not necessarily the version specific to your mm -hmm. uh, uh version of the tool okay so um let me show you what, what what i do what i do when this happens i just close it all off uh like so and like so like so like so like so um, like that, uh, open up a new terminal, uh, mkdir, uh, cdk once more, and then npm install dash g uh, aws cdk, will this so work? Gonna, thank you for the music, because uh, cdk me one more time is now playing in my head. cdk me one more time? <laughs> uh, uh, really? I can? Why can't I? Why can't I? NBM Simlink. Mm. Don't you have to upgrade it because you're trying to install it globally? So there's some kind of, I know with the NPM there's an upgrade command you have to do. Isn't that maybe NPM install double dash upgrade? And then... Uh... Like that this wouldn't work i need to specify uh but it's gonna still fail right so um mm. okay so dennis is saying we need to do the package okay, as no, well it, it is it is yeah. now yeah yeah okay cool this is also i think if you're a new developer one of those things you learn very quickly in normally a very unpleasant way is that semver is a great idea um yeah i still have to see it implemented Perfectly yeah. everywhere. Yeah, and 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 um, Hoi Getten says that uh, you should really use fixed version versions, and I agree that for everything, uh, you should version pin all the things. Um, so uh, that is mm. that's definitely the, the, the case um, when when doing any kind of uh, development, especially when it comes to CDK version pin stuff, because uh, you don't want an update to break dependencies. Right. So make sure to have a version fixed on something. In this case, now it has updated my CDK thing here, but. Is it installed? No. Uh, CDK version. It's still showing up the old one. Hmm. Mm. Um, npm install. Oh, not the global one. Ah. 
it doesn't matter yeah but if i run cdk it will run only the global one in this case the, the local one doesn't work right um unless i explicitly use that one uh, cdk oh upgrade will you that need to upgrade after that upgrade off the dash g that's interesting so does that uh dennis does that thing mean that you are applying the upgrade to the global and yeah, if the other way around interesting but it doesn't work so and if i do sudo it cannot find npm so npm uh, like so but it's using my local one in this case it doesn't really matter if i do mb npm install uh yeah you don't need to upload the globals yeah uh npm up the install upgrade aws cdk so welcome to the stream on updating cdk uh hope you're enjoying it um yeah it's it's updated so cdk i have a better solution for this this thing never failed me um There you go, CD uh, workspace, TMP, CDK. Okay, so I have uh, I've switched over to <laughs> to my terminal uh, off away from CDK. Uh, well, away from uh, uh, Cloud9. So uh, sudo sudo npm install this one. Yeah. It looks yes. like we're actually yeah, yeah. we can uh, possibly uninstall it i think maybe so devayork is uh, asking Ooh. what zsh prompt yes i'm using fish it's not zsh it's fish i've i've switched to the dark side so i've been using zsh for a long time uh but i for some reason switched to sw switch to fish it's it's good uh it, it's not posix compliant but it's not supposed to be posix compliant so yeah it's it's they call it the the shell made for the 90s so there you go um but i mean you do know that the the dark side is currently very popular there, there, masks and respirators. There you go. <laughs> Again, CDK init app language TypeScript. There you go. Fish helped me. So I'm creating a new application once again. All right. Um, before we go, npm install uh, Lambda. Uh, this should la install the latest version of Lambda, uh, but we're also running the latest version of the core framework. So uh, I really appreciate all the help, guys. Uh, you helped me manage the, mm. well, help me fight the, the CDK <laughs> stuff, but I actually switch here. So uh, CDK dash dash version, I think uh, one for one. Yeah, there you go. And if I would do Vim and then like so, uh, package JSON like that we see that we have one for one everywhere so it is it is been like so okay uh let's open up the file called uh something something lib uh it's this one excellent uh import like that and then uh, lambda cool now we need to do a lambda function here and let me actually instead of you watching me paste uh sorry you watching me type uh, you're gonna watch me paste so where are you like that i just need to do one more thing text edit like that remove a few things Atta boy! well movie magic uh cool so make this better all right so we have created another lambda function here as well uh that is very cool so if i save this now and switch to uh let's say a terminal no not that but that and then control a and that and then npm run build
yeah, set paste uh, does that for sure, and I, that's one of the things I always use, but I have not used it right now. So I, set paste is my one of my favorite commands. So what happened here? Um, uh, something something expected. Uh, oh, it's dark on the pasting things as, as he should. Right? So constant lab, and then I just do this and that, that. Oh, has, has this been pasted okay now? Uh, it has not. I need to do one more. Yeah, thank you. I'm missing a lot of things, apparently, in my head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and uh, it was um, before you joined, I just joined the team, and um, literally my day one was in Seattle. Um, basically got on a plane, flew there to meet the team and everybody um, because of our yearly kickoffs and things. Okay. And then one of the Twitch streamers there um, told me about how uh, she and another person had been debugging a Lambda function for 20 minutes on a live stream. And after 20 minutes, they tilted their hand to the right, and there was this wall of hit save in the text. <laughs> but that's fun, right? So uh, I hope you people in the chat are enjoying uh, uh, me failing at this, because, you know, it's all for entertainment and some knowledge. Now we know a bit more how to do... Um, um, how to deal with versioning thanks to Hoe Gerten and Dennis and thank you thank you both you have shared a lot of knowledge with uh, with the community so uh, the build has succeeded but we're missing some things we are mk -der -der lambda like so let's switch here again and then let's uh, edit lambda and call it hello js right no not js uh, X, right? X. And then Lambda. It's this one, right? It's, it's, it's a lot of fun watching you navigate with Vim. I'm, I know about six or eight commands, literally just enough to edit files. Oh, really? Um, yeah, uh, and then I, you use it as a primary. I am a Vim, Vim lover. Um, so I've actually, in the past, I've made my Vim work even better. Uh, 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 so, yeah. And... Dev, Dev York, it's not named, it's not uh, Vim Nurtry, it's actually Fuzzy Finder. It's FZF. It's a, it's a simple binary. It just kind of pops it up in a, in a, it's it's a plugin again, but it's uh, not Nurtry in, in this case. Lambda, hello.js. I'm I I like to think that I am, I am very good at at at, at Vim, but I'm not. So. But I am so used to it that I, I sometimes struggle with editors that don't have Vim key movement uh, like mm. such. So it's it's just a matter of muscle memory, right? So you get used to some things, and uh, so you do it here and like that. Fine. Also, I hit the escape escape key. So unmap your escape key to double J. So you don't have to, especially if you have a Mac that has that touch bar, and you cannot mm. hit the escape key. You use just double J to escape. It saves your life. So, uh, if I go back to Lambda, no, that's fine, that's okay, uh, okay, uh, that should be working now. So, if I would be uh, opening, going here to my terminal, if I npm run build again. Now, why is npm run build? It's because, uh, uh, yeah, it's because uh, it's TypeScript, so we need to compile it to JavaScript. And if I do CDK synth, uh, this should hopefully work. Yeah, it does. So CDK synth actually uh, compiles your uh, your CDK code from um, TypeScript or JavaScript in this case, and and makes it into CloudFormation. So if you do CDK synth to uh, uh, cf.yml, uh, you will isn't actually. It a... Sorry, I just, I just remember. Isn't it a double hop in the sense that if you use one of the, if you don't use JavaScript, it transpiles from whatever language to JavaScript and from JavaScript into JSON files. Yeah, it's it. it I, mean, I, th I think it's just an artifact of TypeScript because TypeScript in itself does not uh, run natively in this case, right? like mm. like such. So it needs to be compiled into JavaScript. So, uh, but I may be wrong. So, so as you can see, this is a big old uh, 131 line uh, CloudFormation code, which is horrible to read, but uh, you don't have to read it in this case. You can just, instead of, worrying about this you can just do cdk deploy yeah it should use ts natively I, I agree right but for some reason it's just doing it like that so 
And you can see here on, on here that it will uh, actually generate two roles. It doesn't just create a Lambda function. It creates also additional things. It creates a role for that Lambda function. And, and this is where the where a slight difference between this and, uh, and CloudFormation comes in is that in CloudFormation, you need to define all these roles for yourself manually CloudFormation will not do that smartly for you, so you have to do it yourself, which gives you a bit more control. Uh, well, here, you know, it kind of wings it. Uh, uh, Dennis asks, can you show the reference to the Lambda function code in the CloudFormation template? Uh, yes, let's do that. So, uh, Vim, CF, YAML. So, if we look at uh, function, right, there we go. So, yeah, so you see, it, it does a whole bunch of things. It, 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 it actually pushes. So there's a, when you use CDK, it creates a bucket uh, on, 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 it creates an S3 bucket where it will store these files. So uh, it will actually store your assets in an S3 bucket somewhere uh, with, uh, with, and this is the bucket name, right? The parameter, whatever, right? So that's how it would do it. Mm. Uh, so actually, that's not a, that's not a, uh, this is a parameter, I believe, or something like that. But yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it uses a parameter. Uh, for that asset. So it passes the, the bucket value, bucket name uh, to this, and then basically your Lambda function is being stored up there um, as as, um, as an asset being later on used through this CloudFormation script. So CDK does not just basically hand off a CloudFormation template to, to CloudFormation, it also handles uploading an, a Lambda function to, uh, to a bucket for you, to, for, your, for you to use. So again, CDK deploy. Welcome, Dennis. And also, this actually proves that pretty much every single app or service out there uses S3 in some form. Yes, absolutely. How's the whiskey, Kobus? It is delicious. Um, we are very stingy with I think I've had this bottle for more than a year now. Oh, wow. And wow. yeah, it's not even halfway. It's uh, We're very stingy with when we drink our whiskey. So I okay. thought, you know, it okay. might okay. be nice. And especially currently, because um, unlike other countries in lockdown, we can't buy any alcohol in South Africa, and we haven't been able to since 27 March. Wow. Oh, okay, yeah. then guard it with your life. Then assess what <laughs> it is. It's a, it's a Lafroy uh, PX cask, right? Yeah, PX cask. Yeah, so it's a... Uh, let me read. It is a 10-year-old that goes into ex-bourbon barrel first, then it goes into quarter casks, and then it goes into... Uh, European oak casks, uh, which originally had um, some sherry. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's it's very earthy, Dennis. It's a, mm. the the four is very earthy, and and people don't like it. Well, some people don't like it, uh, but yeah, perfect. Is there a good German whiskey, Dennis? Uh, I've been living in Berlin for well, two years, but I have never tried a German whiskey, or at least a good German whiskey. So while, 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 while I'm looking into this, if I go back here uh, and I go to t -t 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 Lambda. Not that I, yeah, I, I don't even know of mm. any. So we can see that there is a Lambda function here called please work. Uh, and it's basically that Lambda function. It's that JSON file. Now this in itself doesn't work. There's no integration with, there's no API gateways. There's no, nothing here. But since we're breaking an almost an hour and a half mark, I think we're gonna leave uh, the advanced or the advanced <laughs> parts of CDK maybe for some next stream, and it's already 9 p.m. Uh, at least where I am. Um, so uh, thank you very much for uh, helping me troubleshoot my stream. Um, it was it was uh, very fun, I must say. Uh, and well, actually, th thank you, Kobus, for joining. And Kobus and I plan mm. to do this much more often. I think it's I think it's very fun for uh, for these kind of banter streams. And like Friday evenings are perfectly good to do that. So we're gonna try to switch up drinks. I hope hopefully Kobus, you can get alcohol or new alcohol soon, uh, or we'll just switch to. Coffee. Oh no 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 no! That's not a problem. I have. Um, I've got another, I think six or seven whiskeys, then at least four or five gins, and then also wine. Okay. So we're still fine for the moment. That's very good. That's very good. Cool. So yeah, we, we plan to do this from time to time. Uh, I'm not sure what, how and when, but uh, again, it's going to be a, a, an evening on a, probably a Friday. Uh, so we're going to be doing more streaming on the rocks, uh, depending. The, we're going to do some different topics at some other time. Mm. I promise next time we do it, I'm going to finish my CDK part. Um, so, I'm, well, I'm going to do it again properly this time. And uh, thank you, Kobus, for uh, teaching us all about um, how awesome Terraform is. 
and <laughs> it, it was a great thing to see and also thank you for to the entire chat you, you were very active i'm super happy about mm. that uh, i've seen a lot of messages i've seen a lot of interaction so uh, please do keep on coming and um, yeah if you if you enjoy this uh, let us know i believe we had our social media everywhere here so both mine and Kobus's, mm. you can find us all and I, I, all of the other places as well and uh, also you can you can find us at some hopefully local real person events <laughs> sometime soon uh yeah so and yeah please approach us and ask us are we darko or kobus so that would be fun yes we are gonna print <laughs> some shirts for that <laughs> or train a recognition model uh yeah <laughs> cool uh well thank you very much all i hope you really enjoy this um and uh get to the jest part oh you want to do cloud uh, cdk testing ah we can do that as well. So if you want to do uh, one of the other times, I, I, I promise I can show some CDK testing with Jest. It's it's a super fun topic I, I like to cover, but it's, you know, it's a bit more high advanced and uh, I'll make sure to just have a bit of a drink before that. <laughs> <laughs> so we so, can have a bit of a jest. Yeah, yes, a bit of a jest. Yeah, just, just while we jest. Um, <laughs> so uh, thank you very much for joining. I hope you had a really great stream. Kobus, once again, thank you. And let's do this again. And um, yeah, have a nice weekend and I will be seeing you next week on some other stream. Bye-bye. Cool. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.